If you spend a coffee roast, as you have seen, coffee roasted in every family in Ethiopia. Even if he doesn't know the people, since he has smelled the coffee, he has a right to come and sit down and drink the coffee there. Ethiopia is known as the birthplace of coffee. Legends suggest that Kaldi, an Ethiopian goat herder, roasted coffee beans for the first time during the 9th century, after he discovered the energetic effect the bean had on his herd. After grinding and roasting the bean, he became the first person to drink a cup of coffee. Ethiopian households and businesses consistently feature the traditional coffee ceremony arranged in a corner, with grass lining the floor and a woman dressed in traditional white garments tending to a jabina, the traditional clay coffee pot. However, times have changed since that afternoon with Kaldi in the countryside. Ethiopian culture still revolves around coffee, but the industry has struggled to thrive or even sustain itself. Coffee is a more than $3 billion industry in Ethiopia, making it the largest export product from the country. However, before building partnerships such as the Ethiopian Commodity Exchange, the country's coffee industry made itself susceptible to exploitation from around the globe from coffee conglomerates in the West, such as Starbucks. Tedesa Mescala became the face of Ethiopian coffee farmers when he helped found the Aromia Coffee Farmers Cooperative Union in 1999. The co-op's goal is to cut out the middleman between coffee farmers and exporters. A pound of coffee can make 50 cups. A cup of coffee can be sold for two bowls or three bowls in Ethiopia. While for a pound of coffee we are getting maybe now about 40 people. We eliminated this chain and they tried to sell their coffee and they bring back 70% of the profit back to the farmer's pocket. And since the establishment, we, our coffee is exported directly to the coffee buyers all over the world, of which 70% of our export to, to, to the United States. In a little more than a decade, it has been able to bypass the middlemen to sell directly to buyers from all over the world. The cooperative also undergoes what is known as a cupping process, which determines the quality of the coffee through its body, acidity, and flavor. We are the first in uh, producing coffee in Africa, and we are fifth in the world, you know? So coffee, people are engaged in coffee in the countries. While the industry as a whole may seem like it is progressing, it's still leaving many Ethiopians behind. Wabella Mern, a coffee shop owner, is one of them. In the back of her 16 by 20 square foot coffee shop is a double sized bed. Only a gold curtain separates her work from her home. Like many women before her, Mern left Ethiopia five years earlier for a job as a domestic worker in Lebanon and later Dubai. Mern represents the old Ethiopia, the way industry worked prior to cooperatives. She can't make enough money on a cup of coffee to pay off her loan and her rent, but coffee is in her culture and in her blood. After returning from the Middle East, Mern has no choice but to make a living on her own. She earns five burr, or about 12 cents per cup. In order for Mern to break even with her business, she would have to bring in at least 80 burr, the equivalent to about $4. Despite long odds, Mern and Mescala represent the optimism throughout Ethiopia's coffee industry. Mern doesn't know how her business will survive, but she has faith that something better is to come.